Hi guys, it's Mrs. Chappie. Welcome to California History. So we're going to be doing it a little bit different for a little while and I'm going to be just chatting with you on this video and um, once a week we'll check in and I'll ask you some questions about stuff we talked about on the video, maybe go over the same information again and it'll be a new adventure. We'll have fun doing it together. I'm sitting here in my office um, some of you guys have heard about it and seen some of the stuff that's in it right there. That plate right there, pretty cool. Thomas Jefferson's China from when he was president um, of the United States. No, it's not his real China. It's a replica of it, but that's pretty cool. Above that, that right there, I don't know if you can see it, probably can't. That's a replica of the key to the White House when Thomas Jefferson was president. And above that, you can't see, look, there is actually Thomas Jefferson. So that's kind of the Thomas Jefferson corner over there. That's not California history, but if you're looking at my office, I might as well tell you what you're looking at here. So what I'm going to be doing is sharing my screen with you. That means that you will see what is on my screen. So this is my computer screen and this is my PowerPoint, just like we were in class. So I can actually present it just like we're in class. See, so today the lesson, if you look in your syllabus and you were following along in your history binder, you would see that today we're talking about California statehood. It's our um, seventh week of instruction and our first week, week of remote learning. So, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to talk about today how California became a state. Now, some of this probably looks familiar to you. Look at, I can do this really cool thing where I can actually write on it. So we have spent this entire semester learning about the history of California here. If you're in my US history class, you've been learning about all of these over here, talking about our original colonies in this area. Then we talked about how, Cal how America expanded, they moved west through something called Manifest Destiny, and that is gonna bump into what we've been talking about over here, California. Now, in U.S. history, we just finished talking about Texas and how Texas became part of the United States. But what we're talking about today is California. So if you remember, we talked about the very first people that lived here were the indigenous people, the Native Americans. The second group of people that were there were the Spanish. And we spent all the last semester talking about what the Spanish did. What did they do all the way up the coast here? You guys remember, they built, these are sad looking things I'm drawing, but we're pretending that these are missions, which is pretty funny that I drew them all the way up there because they did not quite go that far. They just went up to Sonoma, which is right ah, above San Francisco there. So what I want to make sure you guys remember, I know we've talked about it a lot, while the Spanish were building missions over here in California, the same time the British were creating colonies over here. In fact, in Massachusetts, which is, oh, way up here, if I can get my act together, up here when the pilgrims landed in Massachusetts was, um, there were Spanish over here building missions. So Spanish are over here in this part of the world, the same time pilgrims are landing there. The year that independence was declared in 1776 was when the mission in San Francisco was built. So we got things happening on both coasts. So then after the Spanish, you guys know, next came Mexico. Mexico declared its independence from the Spanish and these missions over here were used for other things. They became, oh, where they'd have bear fighting contests. They had, they became, um, oh gosh, saloons, which are like um, a bar with food in it. They were used for other things. They weren't part of the Catholic church anymore under, um, the Mexican rule. So when they were part of Spain, they were part of the church. When they were under Mexico, they were not. 
when they become part of the United States, guess what? Abraham Lincoln gives all of the missions back to the Catholic Church. So California, we know it started out Native Americans, goes on to Spanish, goes on to Mexico, and then today we're going to talk about how they become part of the United States. So let me get rid of my thing so I can move on to the next thing. Uh-oh, look, I didn't know that. If I turn the page, all of my doodles are still there, so we better get rid of those. We'll just get rid of that. So what do we have here? Oh my goodness, it's exactly what I just said. History of California, first Native Americans, then the Spanish, then Mexico, then the United States. So once um, it became independent from the Mexican government, it was not officially a state for two whole years. And normally it took a long time for a state to join the United States to go through that, it's called annex state, annexation process. Um, and the people who lived there didn't have a voice in the United States government. So they wanted to be part of the US so that they could participate in it. And thankfully, it went really fast, faster than any other state, because gold was discovered there. So um, in 1849, they started to create their own constitution. A constitution is a set of their laws. And then in September 1850, California, hooray, hooray, was admitted to the Union. So. One of the things that they did right away was to create a state seal. So when we look at this seal here, what kind of things do you see in that? I see all kinds of different things. Like for example, you see a bear. A bear was used because it represents determination. That bear was also used on a flag during the War of Independence from Mexico. It was called the um, bear flag revolt of all things. Uh, and the Californians who were wanting their independence took a piece of cloth and they actually used, I believe it was a type of berry to draw a bear on the flag to represent their independence because bears, bears were found all over California. So we have a bear on our seal. You have this, and I, I know I have a lot of you who are experts on your Roman mythology and your Greek mythology, but this is the Roman god of wisdom. You see that miner right down there? You have a miner representing the mining industry, and if I were sitting in front of you, I'd say, what were they mining? And everyone would yell, gold, Mrs. Chappie, it was gold. Yeah, of course it was gold. We have ships that represent commercial greatness or trade, the, the things that they would mine, the things that they would um, create, the things that they would sell would be put on ships and then would, would be sold. And so ships right here, you see them all right there in the harbor, that represents their commercial greatness and the power that California has. I just read that California um, if it were its entire own country, it would be the fifth most powerful country in the entire world based on the size of our economy, meaning, meaning the amount of um, trade and business that California does. You see back over here, we have these peaks that represent those Sierra Nevadas. And last, I don't know, can you guys see it right there? Right there are 31 stars. And there's 31 stars in the seal because California was the 31st state. Kind of makes a lot of sense that way, right? So when California became a state, it of course needs a capital. And if I were to ask you guys, um, where is the California capital now? All of you guys would go easy peasy, Mrs. Chappie. It's right here. I'm going to try using a stamp. Let's see if I could do that right here. Oh, I can put a star. It's right there in Sacramento. But it wasn't always in Sacramento. California had all kinds of other capitals. For example, its, um, its first capital was in, the, in San Jose. And I'm going to use my star again. Look at this. I got skills. 
right there is where San Jose, where the first capital was. Then after that, it had some other temporary capitals in the city of Vallejo and the city of San Francisco. Vallejo's right, I get my stamp, this is kind of fun. Right there is where Vallejo is, and right there is where San Francisco is. So if I was with you, I would say, hey guys, can you tell me why are all these capitals right here? Why would all those temporary capitals be in this part of the state? And I'm sure if I called on a couple of you, I could ask maybe Maya or Ryan, or I could ask Lucas, and I could say, okay guys, why do you think that is? And I know you guys are so smart. One of you would say, Miss Chappie, well look what's right there, trade. You could have your boats and your ships, and they go right in there to your main bay. So, we saw the ships on the seal, and we know that all the big cities always develop, always throughout history, always around a port where you can trade. So it makes sense to us that that's where the temporary capitals were. Well then, why did it ultimately end up in Sacramento? Same sort of thing, trade. This is in the middle where, where was gold discovered, guys? You guys know that. Gold was discovered up here. Yeah, where's the American River? I'm trying to see exactly where it is. It's gonna be right around here is where gold was discovered. So you would have to go through Sacramento to get to San Francisco. So it means Sacramento makes a lot of sense why it was there. So I should probably erase these because if I don't erase all my spiffy doodles, they will be there when I turn the page. So, Part of California's history was creating a capital and the capitals moved. Um, ultimately, 1854 is when it ended up in Sacramento. So today's lesson about becoming a state um, involves what type of symbols do we use for our state? Well, we got the, the flag, of course. You guys all recognize that. That flag was first used in 1911. And, but it was designed and raised way before that. I already gave you a preview about it. It was at the Bear Flag Revolt. And that's when Americans rebelling against Mexican rule raised this flag where the bear was drawn with berries on a white field. So we have all kinds of different state symbols in our state, the flag being one of them. Um, I thought I'd throw throw out some other real popular symbols. I bet you guys recognize that. That's Disneyland, of course. And I spent about 20 years living in the Bay Area, so this was a symbol I saw a lot. Do you guys know what that one is? Yeah, that's the San Jose Sharks. And why do we have symbols? Why does Disneyland have that? Or why do the sharks have that? Why do you think? Well, again, if I was with you, I know one of you would say, well, it's something that represents or stands for something else. So anytime I saw this on someone's car or on someone's shirt, I would go, okay, that person is a big, big hockey fan. They like the San Jose Sharks as opposed to some other team. So why do we do that? Well, exactly what we were just talking about so that you know um, what you're talking about. If I see this, I know I can think about Disneyland. They're to remind us of something. That's why we have these symbols. What other symbols can you guys think of? Oh gosh, I wish you could tell me. Um, if I were looking at my Harry Potter friends, maybe the Marauders would say that little scar on Harry's head would remind you of Harry Potter, or the wand is something that reminds you of Harry Potter. I wish you guys were here to tell me what you're thinking of. So I wanna quickly go over some California symbols so that you can see um, and begin to recognize them. That one was a really easy one. The seal most people have seen, the flag most people have seen, but a lot of people don't know that we have our own state insect. So the dog-faced butterfly is the state insect. It became our official insect way back in 1972, and you know why? You see this right here? Some people think that looks like a dog, particularly a poodle. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't see it. Do you see the poodle there? Is this his nose? I don't know, but they tell me it looks like a dog, so I'm gonna believe him. 
This butterfly you can only find in California. That makes sense. Why would you have a state insect that was found in other places? So that's pretty, um, pretty much why it's the state insect. And I told you it's already a dog's head. Our state mineral, go figure, everyone knows what that is. Eureka, they found gold. The state has a nickname. Anybody wanna guess what that is? Okay, I can't hear you, I can pretend. Our state nickname, the Golden State. Again, because gold was found there. Now I put this for Tycho, if he sees that. Tycho loves his snakes and reptiles. It's not a snake, but it is a reptile. It's called a desert tortoise. It became the, the state reptile the same year that we got our state butterfly um, in 1972. It's the largest reptile in the Southwest United States. It actually, because it's in the desert, it spends a lot of time kind of dug in and trying to stay cool and in the ground. We have a state flower, which is the poppy, 1903. It became the state flower. I bet you guys could all look outside your windows. They're blooming like crazy right now. In fact, um, I will actually show you this and then come back to this in a minute. Mr. Chappie, there's Mr. Chappie. You guys remember him. He's taught your class before. Mr. Chappie and I went for a walk yesterday and look what I saw here. All these poppies growing on the side of the hill by our house. So I said, oh, we have to stop. We have to take a picture of the poppy because we're talking about California poppies in our class. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys real quick about this because I thought this was pretty cool. I don't know, maybe you'll think it is. Do you recognize these two people? Oh, it's so hard teaching without being able to talk to you guys. This is Prince Harry. He is um, royalty over in Great Britain and he recently got married and he married a gal from the United States which was kind of a huge deal and she was she's an actress she had been on a couple of different um, TV shows there's something called Suits I don't know I've never seen it so Harry married this girl named Megan and Megan was from the state of California and these are pictures from their wedding Totally pretty, looks like something from a Disney movie. But do you see this long thing coming off of her head? It's called a veil. And in royal weddings, they have these really, really elaborate long veils. Now, because Megan was from the state of California, when her veil was made all along the edge, can you see all this all along the edge there? She was from the state of California, so all along the edge of her veil are these very delicately embroidered flowers. What flower are those? Do you guys know what flowers those are? Yeah, those are poppies. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Look at all of those poppies. I was telling Mr. Chappie about that, and he's like, oh my goodness, you're finding the most crazy thing. I told him about it when we went on our walk. So. California poppies, you saw it in a royal wedding. You can go look out and you can see them outside. Our um, state animal is the grizzly bear. It was used because it, it showed strength and power. It once roamed all over the state. Um, and like we've talked about, was used as that symbol in that bear flag revolt. We have a state tree, the California redwood tree. It's the most massive tree in the whole world. Its diameter um, can go, that's the, the diameters from one side to the other, can be 30 feet in diameter. That's huge. And they live, oh my goodness, for so long. They can be 3,000 years old. We have a state motto. Look at that. Ooh, I can do it again. I have such powers, maybe I can, maybe I can't. Oh, I just wanted to spin, there it goes, that makes it fun. Our state motto is Eureka. Eureka means I found it. And we know that they said Eureka when they found gold. And so I got it, I found it, Eureka. Um, Archimedes, this guy who did some work with buoyancy and water and distribution of weight um, you know when if you're in a bathtub and you get in the bathtub and how the water comes up he was the first to discover the displacement of water based on mass and he jumped out of the bathtub he was so excited he yelled eureka i got it i figured it out and um 
that is what people would say when they found gold. And so it became gold in California. It became our state motto, Eureka. And that, my fine friends, is California symbols. So on um, Mrs. Chappie's website, I'm sure all of you guys, let's see, let's get out of here, get out of here. Oh, there I am. All of you have seen my website. That's where you clicked on this link to watch this video. If you go below, there's a couple other videos that you can watch um, um, that tell a little bit more about symbols. Some of them are different levels. I teach eighth grade to a whole bunch of different class levels. I teach uh, younger kids and older kids. As I was doing this video, I just realized I did it as if it was for the younger kids, not for my um, older kid class. So. Oh, well, you could just get to see Miss Chappie when she's in fourth grade mode instead of eighth grade mode, and that's okay. Uh, you guys have all seen that anyways. Um, you can watch those videos. There are some worksheets. You can do some coloring. There again, those are geared for the younger kids. In Mrs. Chappie's history binder, you know there's always a lot of worksheets in there, and they vary in um, what grade level they're made for. They're all fourth to eighth grade. Some fourth graders read at eighth grade level. Some eighth graders read at, you know, sixth grade level. That's okay. You homeschool to do what works best for you. So do whatever worksheets work for you. Um, if we were in class, we would probably, I would probably have you design your own flag. And if you were going to design a flag for you and your family, what would you put on that flag? What would be important to you? In California, it was those Americans declaring independence from Mexico and using that bear to represent that. What would you put on your flag? Like maybe you would want something you're interested in. Maybe you're into dance or soccer or, you know, Wesley's going to put a soccer ball on his flag. I can just see it happening right there. Um, everybody is a little bit different. So if you want to go ahead and design a flag, you could do that. Snap a picture of it, text it to me. That would be kind of fun. And I will see you all next week. So have a good, I don't know, time staying home. <laughs> Bye, guys.